Oh, this is so exciting. Hello. Ah! <laughs> I've not seen your face in a long time. Oh, no. Ari, mm. can you hear us? Ari's having a little <laughs> problem oh, <laughs> with the Ari. technology. Oh, Ari. Here we go. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. My computer um wasn't <laughs> Is that guys do you want to... Oh wait a second. Is that what I think it is? It's a glamour light. It's a ring light. No. <laughs> like the Kardashian's <laughs> house? <laughs> um, wow. For all the selfies you take? Michael. For all those selfie videos. <laughs> well, well, welcome to our little Hi. dancer chat. I miss seeing you guys every day. I know. I'm going to be so out of shape when we get back. <laughs> well, you guys are pushing not, out. Not Emma. Emma's going to be in mad good shape from dancing like 17 hours a day for I everyone do. and their mom. You know me. Start <sighs> so let's uh let's get right into this. We're gonna just oh here it goes. All right, here we go. So <laughs> let's start off with uh maybe introducing yourselves, saying like when and how you got into dance and what the process was like and the experience. Michael, do you want to go first? All right. All right. Um, sure. Well, I first got into dance when I was about 10 years old. Um, my sisters were dancing at some place called Prudence's School of Ballet in South Portland, Maine. And I used to have to wait out in the car every Tuesday and Wednesday when they would go to class. Um, and I had a crush on this girl in the class named Laura. So that was a preoccupation and I was also good friends with <laughs> I was also good friends with her brother Todd but he was way older than me mm -hmm. and he ended up going uh, away to college and then I had no one to hang out with during dance mm -hmm. so one day I just kind of wandered up there in Umbra soccer shorts and a soccer shirt and the teacher Prudence was like Michael why don't you come in and take class and I was like uh, all right so I did it and uh it wasn't awful so i kept doing it and then that school actually closed and i stopped for a couple of years and keep in mind when i did it then i gotta be honest i wasn't super serious um and then i was moving along through life i dated a girl named kate hamilton and she was a dancer at maine state ballet and uh she invited me to come see a dress rehearsal for cinderella and I was there and I was sitting in the audience because we were supposed to go to one of my tennis matches afterwards. And I sat behind some weird dude dressed in weird clothes. I think his name was Glenn Davis. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I didn't know who he was. I just remember thinking like that guy's dressed a little weird because naturally he was in like sweatpants and a sweatshirt and had like a towel around him or something. And he was sitting in front of me in the audience. And then out of nowhere, all of a sudden, he stood up. And then like 15 seconds later, he was leaping across the stage. And I was like, whoa, that was cool. <laughs> um, yeah. And also this little dude named John Pina, he was um, playing the jester in that show. And he was an incredible jumper. And I remember thinking, wow, like people can actually move like that. Um, so I went home that day and I said to my mother, uh, I think I want to dance again. And she was like, well, let's wait till after the holidays because things are really busy right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so January 1, I said, mom, I still want to dance again. So just like everything else I had to do with my sisters, um, <laughs> me and Elizabeth, my older sister came back and started classes at Maine State Ballet. And that was the beginning. That was the beginning. Way before Emma Davis was born. <laughs> or, or Ari. 
as entertaining as watching Ari stare at his screen is. <laughs> so, Michael, what was it like coming back to ballet after a career in Hollywood? Um, amazing. It was, it was like coming home. Um, I did dance in Los Angeles while I was there. Um, and at first I didn't for a couple of years uh, and I really missed it. And then I basically sought out something that was similar to Main State Ballet. I danced at a place called the Santa, Santa Clarita Ballet for a while, just kind of similar, although they do Royal Academy of Dance. Not, not uh, yeah, I know, I know. It's okay, it's okay, we still love it. Um, <laughs> but I, uh, it was literally when I moved back to Maine, I moved back here with five kids and my wife and in the middle of transitioning and starting a new job. But on the five things I wanted to do my first week back was go in and talk to Linda MacArthur Mealy and say, hey, I want to dance again. What can we do? And I had no idea what it would look like. And I had no idea if I would be able to do it. But I just knew that it was something I, I really wanted. Um, and it was shockingly easy and natural. and um, more than I more than I could have dreamed of to come home, honestly. Mm. And you get to do it with your family too, like your kids. I do, yeah. Which is what I asked for. I said, "Look, um, I want to dance again, but I have this conflict where I have all this family now, and there's never enough time for everything. What can we do to make that possible?" And I said to her that I always envied and looked up to the fact that she had somehow magically connected all the most important things in her life into one like congruous thing and so i feel like so few people are actually capable of doing that they have lives that are split up and inevitably one part of your life always feels like it's not getting enough um and i didn't know if that was really actually how linda felt but it, from afar my whole life it looked like that it was like oh well that's that's awesome you get to just like have a chat about business and turn around and now you're with someone you love and you turn around and you're doing something you love and it's all in the same building. Why don't we all do that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so Speaking of things you love I, as a child. <laughs> I am working, buddy. Ari. You yeah. Back? So, I am back. I moved to a different room. I don't know if that makes a difference. Tell us like, oh. two seconds. <laughs> tell us how you got started in dancing and what the process was like. Oh boy. So so before I watched the performance battle version or before like I ever did. Like before you danced. Like how did you get started? Okay. So I was um <laughs> it's actually kind of ironic. I was coming back from a funeral and there was this person that we went to the funeral with greg harrison and he was walking behind me and we were just like you know we're family friends we're just chatting and stuff and he says have you ever danced have you ever done ballet i was like no <laughs> never done that and so he asked me is that something you're interested in and I could, like give you some private lessons so i was like uh yeah sure whatever because I wasn't doing anything active at that point in time. It's probably around middle school or so. And um, yeah, so I started doing private classes with him. And then I eventually went to Portland Ballet and danced there for a while. And my cousin was there. So they gave me incentive to go there and dance. And then I left that school because there wasn't really a ton of stuff for guys. Mm -hmm. So I showed up at Main State Ballet and I thought, hey, why don't I, why don't I see what this is all about? Because I had heard good things. And so Glenn gave me the first private lesson. Uh, not private lesson. It was like a, like a placement class, you know. Okay, yep. um, we did that and then I got him to dance. So okay. that's what I, that's my story. I love yeah. it. And we were party children together. I don't know if yeah. you remember that, but um, I remember that. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. were so concerned about not wearing your glasses. You didn't know how. Yeah. To... I remember that, and I was yeah. like, "Yeah, 
Yeah, during during because <clears throat> I did them. I did Nutcracker with Portland Ballet a couple times. They said I couldn't have glasses on, and I have <laughs> terrible eyesight. <laughs> so I, I was like, I can't dance without glasses. So they told me you need to take a glass. So that was kind of nerve wracking for me. So when I came to Main State Ballet, that wasn't a thing that like you can wear glasses. Um, and I eventually got contact. We're good now. But okay. So just to clarify, the reason that you stayed at Main State Ballet is because you could wear your glasses. <laughs> no, okay, that's, 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 that's the whole... <laughs> That's the that's whole thing. Like, the people doesn't actually like to dance, but he can keep his glasses on. Hey, 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 can I have the glasses? Uh, this way, the, it's, a, it's an ongoing struggle, in case you're wondering. Everyone watch Michael <laughs> when he tries to turn with his glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yep. Oh, no. mm -hmm. Let's talk about favorite roles and memorable onstage moments. Um, any that stick out to you guys? Let's start at Main State Ballet, and then if there's any other things, we'll start with Michael. So my favorite role, and probably my most memorable one, is uh, the Cavalier. And I would say that music is very powerful in memories. And Nutcracker, you hear all the time growing up and so the nutcracker music is really powerful and that particular music for the cavalier and sugar plum um has such an important time in hand i watched people i looked up to do it and i watched what they represented to me and i kind of thought i one day i want to grow into that and not just as a dancer but in so many parts of my life like i want to grow up to be like those people mm -hmm. um and when i did the cavalier the first time a couple of years ago it, that's what it was it was when I did it at Maine State Ballet it was like I am now that role that Glenn was and I had a life kind of like Linda Mealy and 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 they're both making it possible and I get to do it with them mm -hmm. so it was just like such a cathartic amazing feeling to have everything come full circle and have that music play and so I guess you can't, I'll have a hard time beating the emotional and physical and, and, and experience of that. There's other roles that are more fun or, or jumping or, but the whole experience of doing the Cavalier at Main State, pretty awesome. Well, and in Don Q, we did a pot shot together across the stage. I don't know if you remember that. Yes. That was that pretty was, cool for me. I mean. I mean that was my first, that, that was, was my first time. <laughs> doing a pot de jaw with someone who didn't exist the first time I did that role. So yeah. that was also <laughs> I probably existed. I probably existed the first time. <laughs> that's also that show is the first time I ever missed an entrance on stage. So that's pretty memorable. <laughs> I managed to not in any of my stage plays, any ballets, never missed a cue on camera. I come back the very first show back at Main State Ballet. I missed coming on. During that show. <laughs> <laughs> um, Whoops. <laughs> oh boy. Getting right. the dust off, all right. <laughs> yeah. Favorite roles, memorable things, fun things on stage. I think I think Nutcracker Prince probably was my most memorable role. With or without helmet hair. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that is, that's honestly tough. I think I have to say with helmet hair. And I'll tell you why. Um, yeah, I... Can we, can no, we, we insert a screen? Can we insert a, insert a screenshot of that? <laughs> like the... Yeah. Like all the lettuce back here. Um. <laughs> no, I think the first time... The first time I did that role... And honestly, the first rehearsal when I when I started learning that dance, that pas de da, pas de sha, not pas de sha, ah, pas de <laughs> <laughs> Oh, guys, quarantine's getting to me. Um, yeah, the pas de da. and just lying on the ground and then like waking up. Mm -hmm. That was really, really. I was I was so 
emotionally all over the place during just the first rehearsal. Um, and then I had, you know, obviously the same butterflies and stuff during the show, but and it was just beautiful. Music's really, really pretty. Um, I got to dance with Laura, which was really cool. Love Laura. Um, yeah, that's probably my most memorable moment. Plus, I got to, like, um, I got to, you know, have other people, like, all, all my friends around me dancing and encouraging me. This guy, this guy, Michael, who is, like, oh, so good. nice and encouraging all the time, yeah. 24-7. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, there are some times, Michael. <laughs> So you both talked about things that were very memorable and almost, I don't want to say spiritual, but almost. Um, so let's talk about some fun things like Midsummer. <laughs> let's talk about that experience a little bit. I will just like to say we had to start in April for our summer ballet to practice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we still had to pull it together at the last minute. Yeah. Oh my word. That was quite a show. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that, Ari, a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, actually, the, uh, I think that act two is the most running I've ever done. Ever. On I it. On it. Like ever in my entire life. <laughs> I've never run that much. <laughs> so this was, it was pretty crazy. Um, and I got to like, there was just so much acting in that. I just loved that. And what I loved most was the fighting between Michael and I. I love that so much because we both, I, I feel like we both did a phenomenal job at it. And I still- Well, remember, I mean, you finally learned how to do a torture day. I was gonna say, I was gonna say, I remember distinctly <laughs> you telling me, listen, it's just a torture day. All you gotta do, I'm not chucking you. And then I finally got it. And then I went flying. <laughs> I was like, oh, geez. <laughs> so, yeah. And yeah. like, it was just so funny because you, <laughs> like, we are really good friends. If anybody doesn't know, me and Ari, very good friends. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you had to reject me every. Oh five seconds and I'm always crying on the ground and and then sometimes for real like you were actually crying and I was like I'm sorry I actually you know me Ari I like to get into the emotion yeah yep. <laughs> Michael what was your experience like doing Midsummer with us and Jules um always slightly confused <laughs> <laughs> That's a that's a summary. Wait, right, wait. What are we? What are we about to do? What's going on? Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, okay. It's funny that ballet. Most ballets, I can picture things just away from the stage at any given time. That ballet, until the music started, half the time I had no idea what was about to happen, and then we start like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, okay, now I know what we're doing. Never mind. <laughs> Which girl am I in love with right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally. Yeah. Oh, that was a really good time. That was really special. And doing it with Roberto as Puck, that was great. Yeah, it was pretty spectacular. There was one part where we're all frozen and I'm have to look like right at the audience and he would like put the little, he would go right in my face. It was, it was a good time. Yeah. Um, let's talk about some backstage moments. So um, <sighs> it's, the MSD boys have a very strong and interesting connection. <laughs> um, why do you think you guys have a, like, a nice bond? Like you and Michael and all of the guys. Why do you think that, um, what things have influenced the strong relationships? Yes, Ari, why do you think that? I think it mainly stems from us <laughs> Partly, okay, it's, I think it's, there's two ways. <laughs> I think part of it is we all, there's like a, like, uh, no, what were you gonna say? I feel like. I feel like, well, oh, that's, 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 that's <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel like there's a, there's a really strong, like, 
I don't want to say brotherhood, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's, we're all, like, really tightly, like, we're just really all really close because there's kind of a mentoring mentality, right? So, like, when I first came in, there was, like, the, the Mikeys and the Thaniels and blah, 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 and all the, and Glenn. Mm -hmm. And then, so then there's Michael now. And yeah, so there's I, M Michael has definitely helped me a lot with. Um, <laughs> and Michael's here. Michael's here now, so I can't. I can, I can only say certain things. Um, <laughs> no, but I I think we're all just really close because we also don't take each other's. Well, I don't know. We just don't take each other too seriously. I guess you know My we're kid. all really. <laughs> We're all, no, we really can't. It's hard. We're all really, um, I don't know. We're just all fun loving in, in our own ways. Yeah. I don't know. Well, what do you think, Michael? Um, I think the fact that our lives are so vastly different is actually one of the beautiful things about the Main State Ballet Boys because there's there's no comparison or competition among us. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like we're just so different. So therefore we can support each other in the different places that we are. And that's really nice. Um, I also think just at a base, being a male dancer kind of strips away quite a bit. Even when you walk in the door, you're standing there in tights mm -hmm. and you're dude. And yeah. I think that there's like a common agreement of, well, we're in this together because mm -hmm. we're in a yeah. very small minority and uh, there's already not a lot of people out there supporting us. So let's join together in this. Um, and so you think you actively find ways to support each other because at least for me, I know how difficult it can be to be in such a small minority and such a small interest. Yeah. Um, so that's why, yeah. I love that. How do you think that it's going to make a difference to the next generation of MSB boys? Like your examples uh, and everything. Uh, they maintain the non-competitive love that we have. We seem to be fortunate enough that we're amping up to have um, pretty big classes. Mm -hmm. um, at the same age and level and skill and so that removes one of the beautiful factors that we've had which is like generational uh bonding um so i hope that they'll still be able to really support each other um and follow that example because i know it's maybe a little bit more challenging for our female counterparts to do that when in the background there is you know only so many roles and only mm -hmm. uh, so much time and yep. um, and 20 instead of three you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and I also think that I can tell you that the way Mikey his, the way his personality was definitely have, has influenced me and how I relate with people and I saw him as I, he definitely was like one of my first like role models in dance. Because I saw him and I was like, wow, he's hardworking. He's fun loving. He's a great dancer. Um, and I was like, I want to aspire to that. Yeah. So I just hope that any guys that come after us, all the guys that come after us will try to see that in us and can try to be like, I want to be like that. Yeah. Well, um, and it's definitely like, coming from the teachers too you know yeah. Like, oh yeah that you guys have and you have men's class together and the the younger boys see that and they want to they want to do that too you know mm -hmm. so I really like that you said that yeah. um how are you guys staying motivated during this time not just like to do ballet but to like to do anything <laughs> Are you guys staying positive and during this time? 
I don't know, Michael, are you staying positive? <laughs> is, there, is there any happiness in your life? Uh, no. There's a lot of depression. No, just kidding. Just kidding. I'm super positive. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to have a lot of different personalities around me all the time that I can feed off of. Um, and I'm fortunate enough to be someone who believes in God. So from the very beginning of this, I already knew that I wasn't leaning on my own mm, yeah. strength. So it wasn't as big of a transition that I think a lot of other people have to go through of realizing they're not actually in control. I, I realized that quite some time ago. Um, so for me, it's just a, it's a nice reset. Uh, for me, I have used this time to re-examine what is actually essential because when you're not doing anything, the things that seemed like you have to do or that if you don't like that you just automatically were doing uh you kind of look back and you're like ah i'm spending so much time doing this and this and this and do we really want to do that again do we really on that again um i I've, i really like that i really like being around my kids i really have liked that people's mindset has been to accommodate each other because of the fact that we're all in this together no one is, you know, upset at me when I say I need, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to show you a house virtually. So the mindset is like, let's be accommodating. I hope that we can mm -hmm. carry that forward as well, because we can always be that way. If someone says to you, we need to do something a little bit different, um, would you be open to that? I'm really gonna try to make it work for you. We should always be like, yeah, totally. Yeah. I don't think that we always are. Um, so yeah. I hope we kind of carry that forward. I actually have had an awful time trying to keep dancing since we're on the subject of dance in this video. Yeah. Now it's been super hard for me because for me, ballet class is so many things. It is like my, my physical time, my meditative time, even my prayer time um, that I'll do all of that. So trying, it's a lovely idea. And I'm really thankful for all the people who are putting out videos, but it's definitely not accomplishing the same thing for me mm. because you have yeah. to, you have to activate your mind in a different way to watch a video and do stuff than you do in the physical environment. So it's not accomplishing the same thing for me, which has been hard. Well, it's hard for you to find space probably. To get yes, up. definitely you know? not my meditative time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's like it was hard. It's hard enough to meditate with Ari in front of me at the bar, yeah. but with like four <laughs> kids around me. Near there are I think so. four children, five children. <laughs> well, six of you includes me. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. There are times where I wake up and I was like, you know what? I really miss Michael today, or I really miss somebody today. And I, I've realized I somebody and Michael's Michael. Michael, I miss me. somebody who may be named Michael. Or may not. <laughs> um. But I'm realizing for me that dance, like what you said, Michael, it's more than just like physical, you know, keeping yourself in shape. But for me, it's like a social environment, you know, that I don't have um, otherwise. So, yeah, I mean, it might ha I don't have a ton of space in my house to dance. So that is also another great thing for dance is where for me, I can like, the sense of just being free and just, you know, expressing myself um, through dance is tough. So that makes it hard to stay in shape and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably going to come back and be like a two by four. I can't do anything. But I've definitely taken this time to like get back to the hobbies and stuff that I've really wanted to do for a while, yeah. which is fun. Yeah. Or his dad has been teaching me how to draw. That's cool. Oh, really? He's been... That's cool. I was like, he said, he said a couple things like, wait a second. And I was like, I can't see Michael's wrong, but okay. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> he, he starts off very simply. It's like, draw a line. Draw a square on top of the line. I can do that. <laughs> oh, he's a great teacher. He's a great teacher. <laughs> uh, oh, so boy. what's one thing you're going to take when we go back to, I don't want to say the normal because how life is never normal around here. I feel like, but um, what's one thing you're gonna take from this time that you've learned? I think that 
I'm definitely going to take a more – I was actually talking to my mom about this a couple days ago. I'm going to take a more forward approach with people, you know? Being in a house, not being able to see your friends or whatever, you know, extended family, whatever, can be tough. And so for me, when we – which we will, when we get out of this quarantine – that time will be, I will cherish that time more. Um, on top of the fact that I'm going to, I know for a fact, I'm, when we come back from dance, I'm going to work or come back to dance. I'm going to work as hard as I possibly can because this quarantine has realized, it's, you know, taught me, Hey, this has been a really tough time and like without dance. So when you get to reinstate that, um, I wouldn't even say hobby. It's not really a hobby for me as much as it is like just a, a great environment for me too. When we reinstate that, I'm going to work twice as hard as I ever have um, to get better. Yeah. And it shows you like when you step away from something, it shows you like how much you actually do love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I love hearing that. I legitimately, when we had that last dress rehearsal, I came home and cried on my bed. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Now we move on. <laughs> and First so we cry, then we move on. <laughs> yeah, we move on. And then and that's just the way life goes. Um so yeah. Thanks for sharing. Michael, yeah. your thoughts. Uh well I kind of said already that I hope to do less things mindlessly that I actually don't need to do and be really more intentional with my time. And I hope to continue the mentality of being accommodating of people because uh, when it's a virus and there's nothing we can do when it's no one's fault we're all super accommodating but we can probably be accommodating even if it is somebody's fault or it's not essential just to make their life a little easier mm -hmm. yeah well thanks for joining me yeah this was awesome thanks for chat i miss seeing you guys yeah miss all of you guys sad I, mean, goes, I don't miss you guys you guys are a king <laughs> I like, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm thriving right now <laughs> no but it's true like for me like when I'm having like a bad day I'm like okay Michael's gonna tell me to stop being stupid and Mari's <laughs> just gonna give me a hug and I need that <laughs> yeah um, yeah yeah Okay. One of the biggest things I'm well, right now. Enough. Soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> One of the biggest things I'm missing right now. Are you good now? Done. Okay. One of the biggest things for me right now is I'm really missing goofing off with Michael Hamilton. There is no other like I can goof off with other people, but there's like something else, something completely You're different. With your mom, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> Oh boy, but yeah. Soon enough, it'll be. It'll be all over. Don't worry. Don't worry. Be happy. Yeah. Just that. Bob Matt. Great. I almost said Bob Ross. <laughs> <laughs> you always that the trees. Smile. Just Smile. put a little rainbow right here. Just, just <laughs> a little rainbow right over there. We'll just put a tree, maybe a couple trees. All right, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> I love when he thwaxes. I love oh when no, he my internet's up. not working. <laughs> oh, it's cutting out. Sorry. Oh boy. <laughs> oh. All right, talk to you later. Thank you guys. <laughs>